titrations. There's, this is a really powerful technique to determine the amount of an analyte, right? The, whatever the compound is you're interested in. You just need to have a reaction. So you put one reactant in the barrette, the other reactant in the beaker, and man, you can do a lot of really powerful things, quantitative-wise, with pittance of dollars. This stuff is really cheap to do. So I made up this story of how this lady wants to kill her husband, and using the most poisonous thing known to man, only 90, nano, 90 nanograms would be enough to kill him. So she prepares a solution. She wants to make sure that it is 90 nanograms or dilute it down. So she makes her stuff, right? She does the titration. She sees a little color change. If she sees a little color change, she doesn't need to plot it out. But if you can see that if you didn't have a little something to change color, right, then she could have a pH meter in there and just measure the pH as she's dripping in everything in her barrette, right? And regardless, this is what we're going to mess, mess with today, is calculating how much, okay? Now, it isn't such a far-fetched story. I just pasted this in there not too long ago. September, in Texas, right? Cancer, she's a doctor. She tries killing her husband. Well, she, I don't know if he actually died or not. I don't remember reading the story. I'm just so curious about the thing happened in the first place. With antifreeze, ethylene glycol, in his coffee. Right? So it happens. Now, she could have been smarter. But there's a, I'm not going to continue on that conversation, but I have some ideas where I don't think I could get caught. <laughs> okay. A volumetric analysis. So this is a volumetric analysis. We've got a Brett, right, some solution we're going to analyze in the Erlenmeyer, and then another solution we're going to put in the Brett. So what we put in the Brett starts the T, Desiree. It's called the Ty. Anybody help her? Titrant. Titrant. All right. And what's in the in here? I don't know. I guess you could call it the analyte or what is the name for that? You maybe you're unknown. Right? Uh, there's a lot of different names for it. But it's, it's what's in the, it's the other reactant in your reaction, okay? So what I have is I put 200 mils, sorry, not 200 mils, there's exactly 100 mils of 0.1 molar nitric in here. And then the question is, that's going to take how many mils of my 2 molar NaOH, whoops, sorry, Kelly, which is in here, okay? So I need to put the NaOH in the barrette. Oh, good. I remember to close it. That would be a mess. All right, you can do this a lot in lab. Someone's going to forget to close that little valve, right? And it's going to end up all over the ground, right, Andy? Folks like to spend all this time getting it right on the zero at the top of the barrette. It's kind of nice because then you don't have to do any math, right? You just read the final. But why waste all that time? You pretty much just read the initial, right, wherever it is. This looks like it says, read from the top down, jeez, I need glasses. Eight. 18.10. 18.10 is the initial. Okay. Oh, another mistake though. Because when I first open the barrette, it's going to fill this. And nothing's even gone in yet. So my 18.10 is wrong. Right? Because notice that? It had to fill this. So I. I almost caught, screwed that up. So that should be 
No, I'm at 18.6. 18.6. Okay, now I'm ready to go. I just need to put what in here in my nitric acid solution? First an I, an indicator. And its purpose is to what? Color change. Color change. And when do you stop adding the titrant? The very first color change, right? You know, the book might say red or whatever, or orange, you just, the very first color change. This is an acid-base indicator, pH, it should occur around 7, pH of 7, so I'm using phenolphthalein. And we'll get into that choosing indicators and that kind of thing later. That's more like a buffer problem. But Okay, so I added it. There's no color change. It's an initial color. Now, what might help you with all titration problems is, see, this really isn't how I think of a titration problem. 100 mils of 0.1 molar nitrate is equal to question mark mils of 2 molar NaOH. Really, no. That what I think of when I think of titration problems, and this might help, might give some insights into some of these problems that are coming up, is that the number of moles, right, equals the number of moles. Right? The number of moles of one reactant equals the number of moles of another reactant. When when we stop adding, when everything's exactly right, when we hit the one of these two. Right? What's the difference between these two? We already talked about indicator. What's the difference between these two? Equivalence point and end point. Jeff, what would you say is the difference between those two? Yeah, you see, you see the color change. Yeah, you see the color change. That's the end point, yeah. What's the equivalence point then? When our last lab, some folks were forced to use the wrong indicator. It changed color in the wrong region of where their titration was occurring. So, so their number of moles of of NaOH was not the same as the number of moles of HCl. That's the equivalence point. The equivalence point is when this mathematical equation is true. At the molecular level, you added, you know, it's pretty hard to do, you're adding it dropwise, but think of it this way, you're adding the last molecule that's going to react with the last molecule down there. You've added just the exact amount of reactant in the titrant to react with the reactant in the Erlenmeyer flask at the molecular level. They're exactly the same. So the number of molecules of one equals the number of molecules of the other one. Right? They react the same. But moles, molecules are too small. So that's what titration error, a lot of, the, a lot of it is. Is, is just you could pick the wrong one. But not only that, I think a more direct titration error is I had to add some phenolphthalein in here. NaOH is in the barrette. Well, NaOH has to react with the phenolphthalein. Otherwise, it's not going to change colors on you. Because that's all it does, is it just has different colors, whether it's an acidic or base. It's conjugate acid or conjugate base are different colors. So that's the only thing. So that conjugate acid of phenolphthalein has to react with my NaOH that's in here. So that's, that's not HNO3. That's not nitric acid that's reacting. So that's a more direct titration error, I think. Because you're supposed to pick the right indicator. That's not a very good idea of titration error. Okay, so I would say that is the the indicator reacts. So that's why when in lab, you want to make sure, if you like really deep color changes, great, add a lot of indicator. But make sure you use the, that same number of drops of indicator for everything. Otherwise, you're going to be off. Okay. And since drop sizes aren't really that reproducible, the fewer drops, the better. But OK, so let's finish playing with this. I think I added my indicator. Did you see me add it? Yeah. OK. So we can do a quick calculation so, we can, so I can cheat here. 100 mils is 0 0.1 liters times 0.1 moles of H plus in a liter. And then I have one mole of H plus for every one mole of OH minus. Right? That would be the, the mole bridge. 
Everyone with me so far? So I'm just trying to convert the 100 mils of nitric acid to moles of nitric acid. Okay, now I'm converting it to moles of hydroxide. And then, so you can see this better, times what? It's two moles of hydroxide for every liter. And then in a liter, I've got 1,000 mils. Now, one thing I did right off the bat is something that helps me always. I leave spectator ions out. It just cleans stuff up. Like, I didn't write 0.1 moles of HNO3. I wrote 0.1 moles of H+, because I know that this is a what acid? Strong. So who cares about the nitrate? It just confuses things. So I have 0.1 moles of H+, per liter. And then my reaction is just 1 to 1. And again, I don't worry about NaOH, because Na is just a spectator ion. I don't even have it in there. So it's 1 to 1. And then this is from my concentration. I just had to flip it. So 0.1 times 0.1, I get 5. 5 mils. So definitely don't want to dump it in really fast, right? I'm going to be done pretty quick here. I know it's going to be more than one, right? So I don't have to sit here very long because I know it's going to be around five. So I'm going to, there's about three. Now I'm getting close. Right, and if you're in lab, you'd be a lot more careful, I guess. Do it drop wise and not just drip it in there. And you need to stay there for like a minute or so. I probably went over. Now, let's say you're being, trying to be really anal, right? And you got a drop of NaOH on the side. Can you use a DI bottle and squirt it around? Can you do that? Right? You cannot do that if you're going to be adding what we're after. We're, at, we're after H+. Plus. This is DI water. Yeah, there's H+, plus in there, but 10 to the negative 7? You're not adding anything. I can add as much DI as I, well, as I want. I'm, not, I'm just making the color lighter is all. I'm not going to make that color go away, right? So you can add as much water as you want. OK. So that's, that's the game that you'll be playing in lab a lot. Now, you could be doing a spectrophotometric titration. And that's using like the little spec 20, where you'd have absorbance versus the mills of the titrant. That would just end up looking, uh, it depends on what you're, whether you're starting out with a colored solution or a light colored solution. But right, if it ends up, whatever it gets converted into absor absorbs some light, well, then it would look this way. Okay. Here's where you can't add water. Right? Because if you add water during your titration, you're going to screw up the concentration. You're going to screw up your absorbance signal. So here you can't add water. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these. Here's our first one. How many mils of one molar potassium iodide are needed to react with 40 mils of 0.04 molar mercury 1 nitrate. I say mercury 1 because mercury has a bunch of these funky complexes, right? And do you see how its ox oxidation state would be plus 1? It's Hg2 plus 2, so each mercury atom has to have an oxidation state of plus 1 because you have to add them up to meet the charge. So you call that mercury 1. And they give us the reaction. So again, think of it as a titration. It doesn't use the word titration, but it is a titration. So moles of one thing equals moles of another. That would be one place to start. There might be an easier one. It's not like at um, point, well, I'd say 40 mils. Can you start at the? 40 mils of uh, mercury nitrate. You can start there. Go, go from there to mils to 
here, right? You can, yeah, you can run with that, or you, you can start this way. But I like, I think it'd be easier to start the way that Ricky's kind of talking about. And I'm not going to write ki, right? Write i minus. Okay. Is everyone comfortable with this though? If I write 1.00 molar of ki, that's the same as what concentration, big M, of I minus? It's what? Uh, it's one molar ki would be what molar I minus? It's one, because they're right there the same thing. They break up one to one. So that's how I, I'm. And if you do that, just get used to it. I think it, it makes your life easier. So when you could start with, well, they want mills of Ki. We could start with the way we used to solve these problems, right? Instead of going this way, we could go the way where we're after mills of Ki. If you start here, couldn't we just flip that? We'd have our units that we want in the top. I suggest solving it. Oh, sorry, it's liters. I just suggest starting this way simply because that's how we've been doing this stuff in the past. Oh, there's our units. We just have to keep canceling until we get mills. Well, we can get mills right away. That's, that's not hard. We have our mills. Whoop, need a thousand. But I gotta get rid of that mold of iodide. What could I do, Melissa, if I wanna solve it this way? To get rid of that mold of iodide. We could go to grams of iodide, but that's not gonna really help. That'd be molecular weight. Mercury one. Yeah, she's looking, see this? She's getting it into mercury, right? There's two moles of iodide for every one mole of mercury one. And we're after the mill, so we just want to keep canceling here. Then what could we do? Jackie, what could we do next? Yeah, that 0 0.04 moles. We don't have much choice. That have to go on top. And remember those nitrates? They're only there so you can make a solution. Nitrates, alkali metals, just don't even worry about them. And the bottom will be liter. All right. I got to get rid of this liter now. Just do what? Yeah, move it over. One, two, three. Wouldn't it be point oh four? Right. So that's the liters of this mercury one solution. Right. There's my moles of my iodide. My moles of mercury one. The liters. Okay. So there's more than one way to do this. Okay, but I think for this type of question, it's kind of easier to do it this way. And we could have started out, it might have been even cleaner starting out with the way Ricky was talking about. He said, let's start here. You could have started here. You just play the same game. Keep canceling units until you end up in mills of the KI solution. So you can start, right? You can start anywhere. You could have started anywhere in here, really. It's just that it's the safest bet 
to start with the units you're interested in because you won't end up with one over your answer or something. So that's why, that's why I suggested starting here. Okay. Okay. Did anybody get an answer? 3.2 I hear. Thank you. 3.2. So 3.2 mils of one molar Ki is chemically equivalent to uh, 40 mils of 0.04 molar mercury 1 nitrate. Okay. So next one. Now they're going to start getting a little ugly. Limestone consists of calcite. Did that look like calcium carbonate? Yeah. Why don't they just call it calcium carbonate? Does anybody know? With the mineral name? I had to Google it. What is it called? All ionic compounds are crystalline, right? Well, they just have different chemical structures. They call them polymorphs. So this has a different chemical structure than calcium carbonate, so you're not supposed to call it calcium carbonate. You're supposed to call it calcite. You know it has the same chemical formula. Uh, different crystal different structure, yep. Oh, okay. Anyway, so the carbon content in po of 0.5413 grams of this powdered limestone was measured by suspending the powder in water, adding 10 mils of 1.396 molar HCl. So they added a lot of HCl. Just added a whole bunch. It makes it so much easier, right? That you're going to have extra HCl here. And you heat it, and you dissolve, right? Here's your HCl. There's your HCl's reacting with your calcite, okay? And then, but there was some extra, you know, not all of the HCl reacted because you dumped in a lot. So then there was some excess and required this stuff to titrate it. They want to find the weight percent of calcite in the limestone. So let's start with our final answer here. My weight percent would equal what over what times 100. What would it be? Gloriana, what would it be? Uh, uh, well, I'd stick with grams, because make the grams cancel. Grams of what over grams of sol uh, solute? solute? Well, we're talking about calcite, so it would be grams of calcite. Grams of CaCO3 all over which is what mass which is you see the total mass of it that, no it's that powder you want the weight percent of calcite in this powder what was the mass of the powder yeah 0.5413 so they want to know the calcite in this powdered limestone, its weight percent. So here's its total mass, so that has to be in the bottom. So what we're after is the grams of the calcite. Okay, let's see how to do it. So this is a titration, but there's multiple steps here. How I, does anyone have a game plan? Yeah, yeah, but what's the big picture, though? Well, after you find the excess, then you're going to go back and find out what it uh, took just to neutralize it, how much uh, moles of yeah. NH plus it took to neutralize the CA CaCO3 in a 1 to 2 ratio of the calcite to hydronium. I think you see it. I was hoping you'd say something like this, though. <laughs> I think I think you got the right idea, but <laughs> see they add they dumped in they dumped in a whole lot of H, HCl. So here's its moles total. You should write total mole. Oh, I did write total moles of H plus. That's going to be the sum of what two things. That all that HCl that they added, right here it is. 10 mils of 1.396 molar. There's my total. That, those moles of HCl reacted with what and with what? 
Can you see it, Andy? It reacted with what and with what? The HCl reacts with uh, ions. The, the OH. No. Oh, yeah, it did react with the OH in the end. The excess did. So we've got that, right? The moles of OH, we're talking about that excess titration. The then the other thing that the H, that the acid reacted with is the, calcium. the calcium. Not the calcium. Calcium, when you say calcium, it's Ca plus two. H plus isn't reacting with it. It's reacting with the, the calcite, the calcite. Right? The H plus is reacting with the calcite. In a ratio of two to one, it's reacting with the calcite. So the moles, I guess you could say moles of H plus that reacts with the OH minus and that excess titration. And then you have the moles of H plus that react with the uh, Cal calcite. Okay. So do you see that sum where you've got a total and then some moles of the H plus went to react with the excess, but a good number of the moles reacted with the calcite in the first place. So does, this, does the sum make sense to you? Okay. If the sum make, does the sum make sense to you, Gloria? Well, you erase it and clean it up. It's the moles of H plus that only erase. Right here. Let's clean this up. The excess acid required. So some of this acid was left over and it reacted with the NaOH. Right? that reacts with the hydroxides, okay? So it's a two-step, but overall it's one sum. So can you see how the total moles of H plus is just gonna be a number? And do you see how to get that number? Sabina, do you see how to get that number? How do you get the moles of H plus number? The total moles of H plus. Whenever they give you a big M, just multiply it by what? Whenever you're given a big M, you can multiply it by what and get moles? Liters. Well, they give you mils. That's the same as liters, right? So when you see, when you see something like this, a volume of a concentration, right away your head should think, that's moles. I know the moles of that stuff. Because they gave you a volume and a concentration. You know moles of it. Done. We know that one. Do we know moles of the hydroxide? Or the moles of the H plus that reacted there? Yeah. Because again, again, they told you a volume and a concentration. You know moles. And is it this, Danielle, is it the same ratio? If you, have the, if you know the moles of hydroxide, do you, know, do you know the moles of H plus? She doesn't know. You know the moles of hydroxide though, right? Just multiply the two. But H plus always reacts in what ratio with hydroxide? One to one, so they're always the same number. So if you know the moles of hydroxide, that number is, is the same as the moles of H+. Plus. So it reacts one to one. Done. You got it. We'll find it, but you got it. All you got to do is find this one. So you solve for this one. And if you know the moles of hydrogen ion that react with calcite, we can use the what bridge and get moles of calcite. Use the mole bridge and get moles of calcite. And then use what to get grams of calcite? Molar molar mass. So that's the big picture. And to work out these problems, I can't, I've, I really can't solve them without seeing the big picture. 
So it starts, to, it starts for me with recognizing first what I'm after. I'm after this. So I write it because I don't know what, otherwise I don't know what I'm after. I'm after this grams of calcium, grams of calcite. Okay, well that's nice to know. And then you read the rest of it. And they give you a whole, they give you a total moles of H plus. And you have to read the question carefully and realize that's divvied up between these two. But what really helps me the most, I think, is when I see a volume and a concentration. My head doesn't even, it just sees moles. I see moles of H plus there. And if you can do that, these problems are going to be so much easier. You see a volume and a concentration, you see moles. Okay? So get this number. Get this number. Solve for this one. Convert it into grams of calcite. So you can get it to work. If I lost you, just, just ask here. Ah, thank you. that number right up there and get your weight percent. Uh, 91.97%. Uh, did you get something close to that maybe? Figure out your moles that H plus that reacted with the calcite, and 
then just got to convert that to, because that's, because that's your titration idea. The moles of H plus is the moles of calcite. It's just that we need it in grams of calcite. So we'll take those moles of H plus, and we can convert them to moles of calcite. Yep. But we want to go to grams, so last step. Where did I? Oh, we're not messing up here. This is wrong. This is right. So that comes down here. So this is this is a number. This is a number. Take this number minus this number and get your. So like, like I was saying, you need really helps to get used to this idea. This is a number. You, they give you a volume and a concentration. That's a number. This is a number. And this guy's a number. This is the one I'm solving for. So even though it looks ugly, I know I'm going to take one side minus this one, and then I have my answer. Right? So take the 0.01 times 1.396 minus the 0.03996 times 0.1004. Volume times concentration is just a number. It's your moles. So if you got it, see if you can get a game plan for number 14. If you got it, see if you can get a game plan for number 14 to help us out. I was going to ask, is there, is there any complete information Nope. Or is it all there? Because nope. I don't see anything about ratio from NaCl to KBr. So I was, I was wondering. It's there. You just got to think about it. Okay. We'll get you going on it. Yeah, I mean, you can see it. Just want to make sure everyone. That's the only thing I'll see. So are you ready to move on to the next one? So they have a 0.2386 gram sample contained only sodium chloride and potassium bromide. 